Hey guys, Russ Miller here, and uh, we are at uh, RMI Studios in Los Angeles, and uh, we're going to talk today about a remote recording session. Uh, this particular studio is on my property, and um, I designed and built this place to do exactly what we're going to talk about today, which is offer another service to producers and artists and, and other players to uh, track drums other than going to a commercial facility. So uh, we have another video where I talked a lot about the gear that's in here and you can check that out to get more details about that. But today we're going to talk about the actual process of doing a remote session. So a remote session means not at a commercial facility, meaning uh, th they're somewhere else, I'm playing drums on it here. <laughs> and and uh, that happens a lot. Like we, we literally, uh, just a couple weeks ago, I've done two uh, Korean artist records and uh, one from Italy. And it's, a, it's an international event now, you know, because uh, people heard me on a record they, wherever and they wanted that rhythm section. And it's so much better to do this than fly to, you know, Italy, to, not better for me, but better for them <laughs> than to fly to Italy and do it there. So anyway, uh, let's go through the process. The client would um, contact me and say, hey, can, can you play on this? And um, after we worked out the time and money and all those little uh, details. Uh, I have a server that they upload a, uh, some stems to. A stem is a, uh, a mix of multiple tracks. So uh, for instance, maybe there's two or three keyboard tracks and they would just make one stereo track of all the keyboards and one stereo track of all the guitars. And sometimes they'll separate it out like that. Uh, sometimes they'll just make one stem of the whole playback track, which is like the rough demo basically and I would say that's fine you can make that that way just separate the click out or at least give me the tempo that doesn't mean they're going to do that but <laughs> so what I got today is um, a track that came in for a rock band and they sent me the stem and uh, they didn't send me the tempo and uh, they didn't send me the click and that's okay um, I know them and I've worked with them a bunch so we'll give them some slack uh, so the first thing I do is um, we're using Pro Tools HD. I bring down the files from the server. I bring them into my Pro Tools template. And my template is set up here. And if you can see the screen a little, everything is already preset. Kick, sub kick, snare, snare bottom, hi-hat, tom, one, two, three, four. Everything comes up automatically. I've set a template with my headphone mixes that goes out to a headphone station at the drum kit, which we'll go to in a minute. and. Uh, I just bring this template up and I'm literally ready to track. I just, I just hit the, the arm button and boom, the drums are set, all the mics are set, nothing gets moved, everything stays here in this room and I'm literally ready to record. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my tempo uh, for the song. So I'm going to play the song back a little bit. and. Um, So usually what I do is just take my Yamaha click station or one other kind of metronome that uh, uh, will be able to tap tempo and I figure out what it is. So Okay, so I like to subdivide with my fingers so I can make it a little bit more precise. So the tempo is uh, 105. So I set my tempo in there and I bring in my import my stem which is right here and put it at bar one I go and make sure that the music is actually starting on the downbeat here let's go to one it is so they did that correctly we have the right tempo we're starting on the downbeat and I have a click mount I have the click being sent to my headphones so the next step would be to write out a chart, which I've done for the purposes of saving time. And uh, so I hand write a chart for the piece. And this is what I'll be uh, using to um, track the drums with. And I write a real chart. I don't you know, write any kind of chicken scratchy chart. I write one that anybody could really read. And um, if I need to come back to it later, I have something that is 
I can read without having to, you know, know exactly what's going on with my code. <laughs> so it's a real chart. And uh, after I've got that uh, completed, I'm pretty much ready to track the song. Um, I have headphone stations here. It's a hearback system. So I send the music to that, the click to that, and my drums to that. And then sitting at the drums, I can adjust my headphone mix. And so what this will allow me to do is literally go sit at the drums. I take my Bluetooth keyboard with me, my wireless keyboard. It's got all the Pro Tools key commands on it, which I, of course, now have they've been beaten into my head over the past <laughs> 10 or 12 years of working with this stuff. And uh, I take this to the drums, my chart, my keyboard, got my headphone mix out there, and we're basically ready to start working on the song. And this is a, a rock piece, so it's really important you know, to get the right part. It's part-oriented music. It's not uh, straight ahead jazz or something that has the improvisational elements. It's a part-oriented piece. So sometimes uh, I will just practice uh, playing along with it a little bit, trying to work out my part and what I think the part should be before I actually you know, track the song. I'm a big believer in capturing a performance. So I don't uh, you know, cut just the verse and then the chorus and then go back and do the bridge. I play the song. That's the way I grew up uh, making records. You know, we, we put the tape machine on, we played the thing down, and that was it. And uh, I think it's all about capturing a performance, not assembling pieces together into what people call music. It's about capturing a performance. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to take our chart, our Bluetooth keyboard, and our in-ears, and head out to the drums.